All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to talk about Terrence Crawford and what he had to say about Errol Spence Jr. fight and whether or not he would be there to call his, call that man out after the fight takes place and what that means. Let's talk about that in this video. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. We are back in the welterweight division. We have a huge fight coming up this weekend between Errol Spence Jr. and your Danies Ugas for a three belt unification. Uh, and also we've got word from Terrence Crawford and what he's going to do to try to make that fight next relative to that fight. But before I get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are a longtime subscriber and, or a recent subscriber, Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for supporting the channel and, and being an active member of the community and our video comments uh, section and our and our um, uh, live streams we do Monday through Friday uh, or actually Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. Central Time. Also, if you do wager on sports, make sure you take advantage of the partnership we have with BUSR at BUSR.ag backslash Fanon. We'll be giving a thousand dollars away. For after the Errol Spence Jr. your Danny's Ugas fight for people that have wagered using the promotional code Fanon. So make sure you do that and uh, take advantage of that uh, promotion. All right, so let's get into this, man. Terrence Crawford, unfortunately, is not going to be giving us what we would like to see after the Errol Spence Jr. your Danny's Ugas fight. He says that he does not feel like he needs to go to that fight. Um, and as a result, puts in a doubt a lot of different things. Now, over the last couple weeks, we've heard about Air, about Terrence Crawford potentially signing a multi-fight deal with the PBC, right? Or, and there's also been variations of the same conversation saying that he was going to make his mind up about what to do after the Errol Spence Jr. your Danny Zugas fight. But by, not ha by having him not attend the fight, uh, that is a clear sign that he will not be in the ring after the fight to demand the fight with Errol Spence Jr., right? So we are not going to get that, you know, we're not going to get that theater that people would really enjoy, right? Now, I do know for a fact, however, that Terrence Crawford had had um, attended the last fight with Errol Spence Jr., and that was when he fought Danny Garcia in Dallas, in, in Dallas, Texas. He was at that fight. Now, he did not get into the ring or anything like that, but he was at that fight, Um However, I don't think that my personal take on it is it is that get ring call outs and getting in the ring and being there for the fight. Those are all uh, those are all nice to haves. However, it doesn't mean whether it doesn't really say anything about whether the fight is going to get made next or whether the fight is not going to get made next. Errol Spence Jr. has been very, very clear that if he gets past your Danny Zugas, that that is the fight that he wants. Your Danny's Ugas has also said if he gets past Errol Spence Jr. that Terrence Crawford is the fight that he wants. However, you know, if that fight does not take place or isn't easy to make uh, or can't be made, rather, that he would look to fight, you know, Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman after that. My personal belief is that if your Danny Zugas beats Errol Spence Jr., the highest likelihood of the next fight is going to be a rematch with Errol Spence Jr. That's the biggest money fight that would be able to be made for your Danny's Ugas and the one that's most consistent with probably what's in the best interest of, of the PBC. Um, now, as far as the deal between Terrence Crawford and the PBC and whether or not he'd be signing with the PBC on a multi-fight deal or whatever, however that could be arranged, him not going to the fight, I do, I do believe signals something in that regard. Because, you know, a lot, most times, PBC fighters are at the fights, right? When, you know, when they fight with the exception of, I guess I didn't, well, I can't, couldn't tell you for sure whether or not like Keith Thurman was attending fights or not, because I don't think he is. But by and large, those guys in the welterweight division, they tend to be at the fight. They tend to be at each other's, uh, they tend to be at each other's fights unless, you know, the fighter is a bit of a, a bit of a recluse. And, and Terrence Crawford is not a recluse in that regard. He goes to a lot of the big fights. He watches a lot of the big, he watches the big, a lot of the big, Big fights so i just think that it means you know probably that there isn't any you know there isn't any announcement forthcoming with him dealing with them on a direct 
on a direct basis. Also, you know, there's been a little air Terrence Crawford, I do believe, is also taking a little bit of a hit uh, because he's being advised by De uh, Daniel Kinahan. And I do just believe just today that the U.S. State Department sanctioned him a lot of money. So I'm not even sure if he's going to be able to do business in the United States without faith, without him um, and the people that he is paying money to being, you know, subject to fines or confiscation of their money. And I'm just telling you that just off the potential of it not that that's what they said is actually gonna is actually gonna happen so you know the whole thing with terrence crawford is just it's a very very interesting situation um i still believe i still hope that that fight with he and terrence crawford get made even though i know full well that there is a high likelihood that it'll be so it could be somebody like a keith thurman or somebody like that um if you know terrence crawford is not willing to make you know the financial um the financial sacrifices necessary to get the fight done with Errol Spence, to get the fight done with Errol Spence. You know, this and and saying that, you know, it's probably a good time to play pay credit, you know, to uh to Devin Haney for what the willingness that he had to take uh you know to take less than market rate for a big fight to be made because he wanted to get the undisputed title. Um I'm just not sure if uh if Terrence Crawford is of that mindset, specifically because Terrence Crawford has already had an undisputed title, and he also did, you know, take that route before, where he gave, I think he paid like an extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the IBF, and I think also Julius and Dungle might have had to pay one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the IBF to get that made, but you know, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and you know three, four million dollars less than what you want to make. That's a that's a huge, huge, huge difference. So, you know, we'll see what happens, man. And also, it'll be interesting to know whether or not Terrence Crawford. Now, if Terrence Crawford doesn't go to the Errol Spence Jr. fight, but he winds up going to the Jamel Charlo Brian Castano fight, I think that that would be absolutely hilarious, man. Because eventually, man, I do think that um, that Terrence Crawford is going to wind up being up in that weight class uh, with um uh, be up in that weight class with Jermel Charlo. But, you know, all kind of people are talking crazy about the 154 pound division now that uh, that Fundora beat Erickson Lubin. I think people are kind of going a little bit too far with it because, you know, Fundora is was definitely hittable. And if somebody knows how to move side to side and get out of the way of those uppercuts, they can probably beat the kid. But anyway, uh, very, very interesting discussion, man. I certainly hope that Terrence Crawford changes his mind and shows up to the fight so we can see his picture on camera and, you know, continue to hype up the fight or sell, you know, sell a fight. But more important than that, I just hope that these guys make that fight next and we get that opportunity because, you know, nothing is nothing. Tomorrow's not promised, man. One of the things that Errol Spence Jr. said about, you know, the car accident that he had and the um, and the torn retina that he had is like, man, you know, you've felt like he's living on borrowed time, right? Like, I, it, like you got to get this stuff done because you never know what's going to happen next. You know, that, that sense of mortality about his career, career mortality, um, you know, I, I think is really real, especially also for Terrence Crawford, who, you know, is 34 years old now going, he'll be pushing up on 35. His, you know, his physical slowdown is going to be on its way soon. But anyway, that's my take on the situation. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.